We will never find anything on this site that screams endeavour. We will never find a sign saying Cook was here. We will never see a ship's bell with endeavour crossed out and Lord Sandwich inscribed on it. It's an interesting process. Archaeology is an interesting process. And it's a process where we call the preponderance of evidence, where we've got a whole series of things pointing to RI2394 as being HMB Endeavour. And so far, we found lots of things that tick the box for it to be Endeavour and nothing on the site which says it's not. The National Maritime Museum became involved in the hunt for HMB Endeavour relatively early on. There was two historians in Australia, Des Liddy and, and Mike Connell. They had actually figured out that HMB Endeavour had become a vessel called the Lord Sandwich and had been lost off the coast of America during the American Revolutionary War. An historian in Rhode Island, a woman by the name of Dr. Kathy Abbas, she was investigating a series of shipwrecks in Newport, Rhode Island. Those wrecks were associated with the siege of Newport in 1778. One of those wrecks was a vessel called the Lord Sandwich, and she had read the article by Des Liddy. And she thought, hey, I wonder if it's the same vessel. And in 1999, an archeologist from the National Maritime Museum, Paul Hundley, went across to Newport, Rhode Island to meet with Kathy Abbas and talk to her about the possibility of the museum becoming involved in the hunt for HMB Endeavour. And so that's where I got involved. In 2000, I went across the pool and we've been involved in the hunt for the Lord Sandwich wreck, ex HMB Endeavour, in Newport since that time. I've been involved uh, with the investigation of RI-2394 since 2017. That's included traditional recording methods for archaeologists, which is measuring timber sizes, trying to get a sense of what's down there, uh, you know, what, how much of the hull is left, what specifically do we have, and is there anything within that shipwreck that we can match to our historical knowledge of Endeavour. The other thing that I've been tasked with is what's called 3D photogrammetry. We take multiple digital images uh, of the wreck site in the area that we're recording, and then we take those images and we plug them into a software program that stitches them together into a 3D model. One of the issues with working on that particular shipwreck site and in Newport Harbor generally is that it's not the best visibility. Most of the time the water clarity is about a meter if we're lucky. Uh, some days it's absolutely pitch black uh, where we can't see our hand in front of our face. So it's hard to get the details that the program needs to stitch the images together. I can't believe how tiny this is in places. Yeah, I know. Look at this space. Is Much it nicer. Much more headroom. Yeah, a lot more headroom. Yeah, Cook would have been grateful for this. Endeavour is fairly well historically documented. So we have all of the information that was recorded by the Admiralty in 1768. And when they modified the vessel for Cook and Banks, they put in the shot locker for a start, and then they put in the magazine complex, because they didn't have one. We have a listing of the size of timbers. We have plans that show the hull, um, both from profile, from overhead, each deck. We have seen very, very close uh, comparison between what's on the 1768 Endeavour plan and what we're finding on this wreck site. Perhaps they shifted the stove to midships uh, or they put a second one in when it was a prison hulk. And there are other specific construction features. For example, how the keel was connected to what's called the stem post, which is the central post that both sides of the bow were connected to. The method of joinery that we're seeing on our I-2394 is very close to what's on the Endeavour plans. The timbers are British timbers. The size of all the timber scantlings are almost identical to Endeavour. And I'm talking within millimetres, not inches, but millimetres. The stem scarf is identical, absolutely identical. This stem scarf is also a very unique feature. We've gone through a whole bunch of ship's plans, lots of 18th century plans, and we can't find anything else like it. Given that Lord Sandwich was intentionally scuttled, uh, it was sunk on purpose as a block ship, the chances of finding artifacts that would provide an immediate identification, such as a bell, were very unlikely to see. 
And that's because anything that was of value would have been stripped out of that ship before it was sunk. But what has been recovered up to this point um, is indicative of an 18th century time frame. So all these things are pointing to this vessel being Endeavour. But all archaeological theories are open to discussion and review. We have a limited number of lines of evidence we can use. And because of that, we have to be thorough. We will get all our facts together, put them into a scholarly publication, and then put that publication out to review, not only from archaeologists from America and archaeologists from Australia, but also archaeologists from Britain who are used to working with 18th century wooden ships. Not only archaeologists, but scholars on Endeavour, historians, people who have done serious deep dives into the historical evidence. Thank you.